truth is reality. This idea goes through the whole history of philosophy. Already Aristoteles said, to say of what is, that it is, is true. And he again, most certainly adapted the idea from Plato, as all do. For millennia, scientists have been breaking their heads about how to establish unity between the thing in itself, how we perceive it, and how we then speak about it. A quest for the most efficient and effective representation of the external world, a representation that helps to forage for information, support decision-making with analytics, generate feedback automatically, create personalized learning environments, and many, many other applications. But what if we ask the wrong questions? What if instead of trying to represent reality, we could actually make reality? What are the rules of the spiel when we treat reality as a medium? The key to unlock reality as a medium is certainly found in perception. So let's untangle that a little bit. Perception is an active process a reconstruction process. The mind reconstructs reality through perception. This is evident in, for example, the way the retina works. Pre-processing of light beams happens already on the retina. Some light beams are extricated, some are inhibited. The primary visual cortex here at the back of the brain processes shapes, detail, color blobs, angles, and then it goes up the what and where streams across the whole brain, almost. This is most visible on optical illusions that this is an active process. I don't know if you can see it already. This is where the active comes in. The process works in two directions. It works from the outside in, but also from the inside out. Thinking influences perception. Think, for example, of hallucinations. The thing I like most about this optical illusion is that once you've seen it, you cannot unsee it. Our visual memory is just too powerful. If you haven't seen it by now, you might see it now. This is actually a cigar sticking out of the wall with at the left of the box a tip and at the right of the box the end sticking in the wall. Perception reconstructs reality. That's why it, the arrow goes to the right. Perception also helps to build experience. We have an episodic memory, we have a sensory semantic memory, we have a muscle memory, we have many different types of memories. If we want to hack into this, we have to hack into perception and we can do so with augmented reality and wearable technologies. We can put gateway devices in between the real world and what we perceive to help us build then different types of experience. There are many different gateway devices available for augmented reality. There are retinal displays, head-mounted displays, there are handheld devices. Some of you may have already played Pokemon Go on a mobile phone. There are spatial see-through displays, there are projection-based displays, many different types. Head-mounted displays, also known as smart glasses, make possible an example like this. The little inset video shows the view from the glasses. A nice Halloween prank, huh? I've been told, if you very strongly believe in it and you walk through the skeleton, you feel a shiver running down your spine. <laughs> if you believe, if you believe. The other technology, wearable technology, allows us to hack into additional senses, use additional sensors. We can, for example, use electromyography in an EMG, such as uh, the Talnig Labs Mayo, as you see here on the picture, the armband, to measure orientation, acceleration, and muscle movement on the eight paths to control interaction in the smart glasses. Here's another fun example that makes use of this. The lightsaber is enabled with voice commands. On. 
and it is controlled using the sensor fusion between the optical tracking of the glasses with the sensor tracking of the armband. Off. Quite fun, as you can imagine. Yeah, we have a lot of fun in, in my lab. I should have mentioned that what you've just seen in this video is a flat 2D recording of what is a 3D experience. The light beams from the object pass unfiltered through the display, unfiltered through the glass of the smart glasses, and additional light beams are projected in from the display. If you tried this lightsaber experience, the only thing that you would see that is not from the real world is a lightsaber itself, kind of a floating, shimmering hologram in your field of view. I guess that's my dry explanation for if you try it out for real, it is much cooler. <laughs> Clearly very entertaining. But what about if we use these superpowers for good? Let's take this to a workplace context. We have taken this technology to Lufttransport in Norway, halfway up the Arctic Circle, to see if we can train maintenance engineers of ambulance airplanes with it. We have first recorded what an expert would do. We have asked them to don the glasses and some additional hardware, record what they would do, and use a kind of think aloud protocol to speak out what they're actually doing, here, deliver the explanation required. If this 600 within limits, and then close the panel again. And we then can clean up this recording and make it available to trainees to have them have the same experience. This is now what the trainee sees following in the footsteps of the expert, seeing this shimmering go, seeing where the yeah, expert looks, accumulate seeing where the hand position is, that this glob that you see in front of you, it is 600, it and means? listen to their explanation. We have also taken this to Italy, to Genoa, to test a training procedure of a new ultrasound feature um, with radiologists. The procedure was about checking the main carotid um, to see if there are any signs of clogging using the ultrasound and using some, some Doppler measurements that I don't fully understand um, and I'm not going to explain. But with the help of this example, I will tell you a little bit more about the authoring that we have created, kind of a reality editor that allows us to use in instructional design tools beyond the ghost tracking and the think aloud that you've already seen to create these experiences in situ, in the place. You can see here this radial menu that allows the author to select different types of annotations. For example, a textual annotation, for example, audio recordings, or also um, the ability to place 3D content or to place kind of a visual language of what people are allowed to touch and where they should look and what they're not allowed to do. This makes authoring of real-world experiences using augmented reality fairly easy. <coughs> we have also tested this in Turin in Italy um, with astronaut trainers in a module of the International Space Station on the ground to test the guided assembly of a storage rack. This is what it looks like now from the perspective of the trainee. The trainee uses voice interaction to so bring up list. a task list mm -hmm. and then go step by step through this linear process, Next. receiving the instruction where required, being guided to the right location. Remember, what you expect you are performing the task. Getting videos, images, Next. pointers, icons that guide through the successful assembly of such a storage rack. It could be any other part that is up there uh, on the International Space Station. Hopefully successfully, but hopefully also providing the training that is needed to survive in extreme environments in this case. You can see how our actor is demonstrating the procedure that we have tested. Let me come to the conclusion. I say we can close the dissociative gap between knowledge and its practical application. 
by putting representations into the real world. Yes, we can make reality, treat reality as a knowledge medium at least. If done well, we can commit to accepting this as a form of reality. Maybe not the real real, but the new real. And if we can make reality, why don't we just stop there? Maybe we do not have to produce everything we want. Maybe we don't have to print a handbook, not manufacture an object that we want to try, reuse a physical button for multiple functions. Maybe we can save the scarce resources of this planet by sometimes having something super real rather than real, making the world a little bit more sustainable. Thank you.